Hello, my name's Andrew Rochford. I'm a teacher trainer working for the British Council in Bangladesh. This short webinar consists of an overview of a research study I conducted towards the end of 2022, but looked at the assessment of spoken English in Bangladeshi primary school classrooms. All the key information is summarized in the PowerPoint slides that accompany this presentation. The study was motivated by an announcement from the government of Bangladesh at the end of 2021 that a continuous assessment approach, which effectively means in-class formative assessment, would be introduced at the beginning of 2023. These changes, I believe, would be a challenge to local teachers, in particular, the assessment of spoken English. By exploring the challenges of assessing spoken output, I was hoping to identify ways to mitigate the risks, and I believe it's in everyone's interest that the implementation is successful. In terms of context, the current teaching of English is perhaps not too dissimilar to that in many other countries. Non-communicative, exam-oriented curricula administered in under-resourced, overcrowded schools by teachers with low pedagogic and linguistic skills. As a starting point for the study, I believed I needed an assessment lifecycle model that reflected spoken assessment for young learners and against which current practices could be compared. The difference between the model I created and others is a focus on the transition from define to implement. Defining and implementing a lesson that produces a meaningful amount of spoken output is often a challenge for teachers with limited skills, and I felt many models gloss over this transition. It's also important, I believe, to highlight the range of knowledge that teachers as assessors require in order to assess their students' spoken output effectively. Another important consideration, I felt, was the concept of language assessment literacy, which introduces a notion of all relevant knowledge shared across all stakeholders in an educational ecosystem. In terms of the research itself, my focus was on primary school head and assistant teachers, the ones who would be responsible for implementing the proposed changes. Therefore, as the success of the intervention was dependent on teachers, teachers were the focus of the research. In order to gather the required information, I felt an online survey of a large number of teachers would provide the most accurate reflection of beliefs and practices. For an in-depth perspective, the survey was complemented by a small focus group meeting. I wanted to explore three areas. Firstly, perceptions of current teaching practice. Secondly, readiness to adopt formative assessment practices. And thirdly, perceptions of contextual factors that might impede the proposed changes. The knowledge acquired through the exploration of these questions would, in my opinion, best help identify the risks associated with the proposed governmental changes and help identify potential solutions. The survey was trialled, carried out, monitored, and the results collated. The focus group discussion was held during this time and a recording of a discussion transcribed. All the data was then analysed and evaluated using Excel and SPSS tools. This slide shows a summary of the demographic data that was collated during the survey process. Returning to the focus group, the participants were chosen because of their experience in different interest areas, and I felt their different perspectives on local educational practices would complement each other and lead to a well-informed discussion. In general, I believe that successful focus group meetings are dependent on a range of complementary knowledge and the interaction of the group members, not just on numbers or experience. Many insightful comments were made, some of which are shown on this slide. Turning to the findings of a survey and discussion, several significant points can be, regard, can be made regarding each research question. 
Firstly, in terms of perceptions of current practices, the control exerted by the higher authorities prevents teachers developing their own communicative and student-oriented lessons, which negatively impacts the amount of accessible language produced. That said, there is generally a lack of understanding regarding CLT as an approach. In addition, there's an overall deficiency in the amount of in-class assessment that takes place. Regarding readiness, teachers stated a willingness to change, but overall demonstrated an inability to reflect on their own teaching practice or to be able to plan remedial actions for their students. Finally, regarding contextual inhibitors, two key issues were mentioned. The lack of understanding regarding the benefits of formative assessment by parents and guardians, many of whom just want to see their children examined and scored, and a lack of a national assessment framework for the assessment of spoken English. There are a number of implications of the research as shown, I believe. Spoken English can't be assessed <clears throat> unless meaningful amounts of it are produced. And this requires a change of emphasis <clears throat> in lesson design and implementation. Teachers require training in assessment. They don't need to have an extensive knowledge of each area, but just enough to enable meaningful tests to be carried out. They should be looking at breadth rather than depth of learning. Teachers also need the freedom to decide what's best for their own students. In addition, they need to develop the ability to reflect on their own practices in order to plan how best to help their students develop. For this, they need training also. Additionally, national standards and controls are required to evaluate national progress. Finally, the stakeholders in the system, parents and guardians need to be educated regarding the benefits for their children of a formative assessment approach. It's also worth comparing these proposed changes against the experiences in other developing countries. Although a governmental ideal, implementing a formative approach is often hampered by teachers who see no personal benefit in changing and will stay with summative assessment processes unless carefully monitored. To reiterate the main points of this slide, I believe, are firstly, educational authorities need to be aware of the extent of the impact on classroom practices that their proposed changes will have. They need to manage the flow of knowledge to ensure that all stakeholders are sufficiently trained or informed and need to organize teacher training in a number of significant areas. For their part, teachers need to be open to change and to understand the key concepts of a communicative classroom and to learn how to reflect both on their performance and the performance of their students. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.